Welcome to Peak Radar Live, where tonight we are on stage at the Shockley Zollebach Theater in the Ent Center for the Arts on campus at the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs, where on July 15th, Theater Works is opening their first indoor performance since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. It is Lady Day at Emerson's Bar and Grill, and here with me tonight, right here live on the set, is Cherish Martin, who stars as Billie Holiday and director Lynn Hastings. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Hi, how are you? We're going to start talking to Cherish about the story of this incredible show and how it came to be in this moment in time. So, Cherish, tell us the story of how you came to be Billie Holiday. Um, so, I, uh, I um, actually went to the University of Northern Colorado, and I think after, you know, you finish all of your, a lot of your training and your schooling, it was um, really important to me that I kind of flocked on my own and the big goal was to try and figure out well what one woman show would I love to do mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of always been a dream of mine um, and my grandparents were huge blues and jazz fans um, so we had listened to Billie Holiday um, and Sarah Vaughn sure. um, we listened to a little bit uh, some of my rainy stuff but not very much at that age <laughs> <laughs> so I knew a lot of Billie's music um, yeah. but I wasn't very familiar with Billie's story um, not not at least uh, I'm sure a in, lot of us are that way right yeah. right and, and in full and so um, I had kind of talked to a couple of different theaters around the community mm -hmm. um, and it seemed like something that everybody really wanted to see um, and I was just so grateful that uh, Caitlin at Theater Works had approached me and said I think that this is something we should really do um, and we were able to develop this fantastic cast um, and now we're here and, and here in just a short little while, we're going to be opening um, on the 15th. Yes, fantastic. So uh, Cherish does star as Billie Holiday. Um, tell us what happens during the course of the story. What will people experience when they come to the show? Yeah, I mean, I think they're going to get a very, um, we've said before, a very unapologetic and genuine picture of what Billie Holiday's life was like. Um, it, it, completely transparent um, in her mind frame, in her point of view, everything she went through uh -huh. as far as from her childhood and to what happened into the entertainment industry and what happened in her personal relationships um, and even what happened as, as far as concerning her being um, an advocate in the community and um, uh, not just an advocate, but she was a, what is the word that I'm looking for? An activist. Thank you. Yeah. An activist in the community um, and what that was like for her and a lot of the struggles and challenges she faced yeah. through that. But there's a lot of fun in it. There's a lot of comedy um, and really good music. Oh my gosh. Of course, that incredible music. And it looks here like we're almost in a jazz club right here on the set. I love how immersive that is where you could just imagine what it would be like to just sit and, and be in her audience live. Um, so you're not alone on stage, though. Behind that big, beautiful piano, Earl Schaefer Jr. joins you. Tell us about Earl's part in the production. Yeah, so Earl plays Jimmy, um, which is Billy's a uh, good time flirt buddy um, and pianist <laughs> and bodyguard and protector and really good friend. Um, you know, he kind of just watches her throughout the whole show. He makes sure that the, the show runs as smoothly as he possibly can, oh. although sometimes it can be a little challenging for him. <laughs> um, but I think that is just her her really good buddy and her really good confidant that she knows that she can she can trust in. Yeah. And you and Earl and, and Lynn and the, and the whole production team have been through a pretty special process to mount this production right now in, in this moment of the, the pandemic, the, maybe post-pandemic. Tell us what the process has been like compared to your uh, previous experience in theater. Yeah, it's definitely been very different. Um, you know, uh, from the very beginning, we talked about what it was going to take to make sure that everybody stayed as safe as possible. Yeah. Um, all of us had were made sure that we were vaccinated. Um, during the beginning, uh, we all were making sure to wear masks. And we did a lot of rehearsals outside, which was really interesting. I had never done anything like that before, especially with the with the piano and music kind of spreading. And the neighbors were just really overjoyed with <laughs> <laughs> The All music that we had, exactly, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, and then even coming into the theater space, I, I think a lot of us as performers were really questioning what was going to happen in yeah. our world and how are we going to be able to continue to tell stories. Um, so it's really exciting now that that is starting to happen again. And you're starting to see it in Colorado Springs and all across the nation that 
theaters are opening back up again. The seats are being filled, tickets are being sold, yeah. and this is our sense of normalcy again. Absolutely, and and we've all got to meet you guys there and buy those tickets and, and meet you in this really fragile moment um, and, and attend productions like this now as they go up. You've been in rehearsals for months, and that's something that I think was has been interesting to see because as the world opened back up, you know, there's this lag time because there's it takes so much time to build a production and put something together live so um you guys really did start early to be able to be out now and uh that's an incredible story. And I'm so glad that you did because yeah, it's so sure. exciting now uh, to have a chance to see uh, Lady Day at Emerson's Bar and Grill. All the uh, show details so that you can buy tickets and support them are on peakradar.com. Uh, now, Lynn, I think we'll uh, ask you a little bit about the production as the director. Yeah. Uh, what do you hope that audiences will take away from this time with Billie Holiday in the script? Uh, the, I think the key thing to to take hold of and to embrace in this production is it's not the Billy Holiday that we're accustomed to seeing, mm. you know, beautifully quaffed with the gardenias in her hair, <laughs> right. just beautifully impeccably dressed. She's at the very end of her life. She's about three, four months from dying. Oh my. And so she does not die a pretty death. Her body just pretty much fails due to drug and alcohol abuse. Mm. And so the Lady Day that you see at Emerson's Bar and Grill is very different than the Lady Day that we were accustomed to seeing mm. in the 1940s because there's a lot that has happened in her life. Mm. And all of that is catching up as she begins to self-medicate mm. um, to help get through that pain of to her cope. challenging life. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, uh, she certainly is one of those iconic uh, 20th century artists yes. whose story is told for them. We yes. all think that we know her and, and this script, it sounds like, really gives her a chance to tell her it own truly story. Is, yeah, it truly is her story and Cherish and I talked uh, a lot about that. I said, you know, people think that they know what this story is going to be about and they think they know what Billie Holiday we're going to see up there. They don't know. Uh -huh. They probably don't know this side of Billie yeah. Holiday. So I hope that they they walk away going, my gosh, I didn't understand the impact of poverty mm -hmm. and racism mm -hmm. and the effect that it had on celebrities. Mm -hmm. And I think with what has happened with George Floyd and Breonna Taylor is that more celebrities are coming out and mm -hmm. sharing their stories of racism mm -hmm. and that nobody's immune. Right. You know, right. and the story's relevant now because kind of the facade of us being a post racial country, it's coming mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. It really is. There's been a mm -hmm. facade with the election of Barack Obama. Um, a lot of folks said, oh, well, that just means we're post racial. We're beyond racism. Right. When really exposed how racist this country still is and that we haven't mm -hmm. come that far. Mm -hmm. And so I think the story, um, is relevant today because it shows the impact of racism, poverty, abuse, that cycle, mm -hmm. and that we as America, we're still in that cycle. Mm -hmm. We still are. Absolutely. Well, and it sounds like it frees her voice as a woman and a woman of color uh, whose story has been sculpted yes. for a lot of intentional reasons over mm -hmm. time to give her airspace again. Yeah. And, and, and hopefully audiences here in 2021 will be able to hear that story and connect with her in a way that they couldn't maybe even a year ago. Yeah, absolutely. It's exciting to think about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so tell us about Colorado Springs in 2021. Uh, what do you think this script has to say to local audiences? Oh, to local audiences. You know, um, as I watch Cherish every night, um, I'm a big Fannie Mae Duncan fan and I just have this image that Emerson's is really the cotton club down there on the corner of Cascade in Colorado. How fun to think about that. Oh. You know and so I hope that you know if we have some patrons who went to the cotton club mm -hmm. I hope they feel like they're having a moment in the cotton club yeah. and Fannie Mae is at the bar and so you know this is a time period in Colorado Springs where something very monumental and groundbreaking was happening with mm -hmm. Fannie Mae Duncan and right. the Cotton Club and everybody welcome. And so I hope that we transform folks a little bit back to that time era, but also to show the fight mm -hmm. that the artists that Fannie Mae Duncan had at the Cotton Club had to go up against because she mm -hmm. had her own home because they couldn't stay in any hotels. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's a beautiful moment. The music is 
beautiful people will be transformed back into the 40s and the 50s. And they're going to be singing along with these Billie Holiday songs that we know so well. <laughs> yes. But also I want the severity of the time mm. and the impact that systemic racism has had on all uh, black Americans, not just everyday Joes, but also the celebrities who, you know, they have a different story that's told for them, as mm -hmm. you said. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. that's a wonderful to think about whether you're imagining the Cotton Club or Emerson's Bar and Grill. We hope you'll get your tickets to Lady Day. It runs from July 15th to August 1st. Come on out, support theater works, support local artists, and support the return of indoor theater in our region. You'll find all of the details at peakradar.com. Mm -hmm.